Hello, everybody, and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around fancy Premier League. My name is Such. And my name is James. It's not always fantasy Premier League. Today's people's poll, James, definitely isn't. No, and it's the weekly when can you do something. It is something. a bit of, it is. <laughs> It is fantasy, just not fantasy <laughs> Premier League. <laughs> it's, it's about a football club living in a fantasy world or certainly trying to get around their fantasy problems. Um, it's the weekly, James, when are you going to do something again on Barcelona? Um, it has won the people's power. Didn't win it by huge, actually. No. Uh, but I think it, it does speak volumes that I put a Premier League related uh, kind of transfer idea, which is fantasy as well. And uh, Barcelona still won the vote, despite obviously the majority of our listeners primarily being interested in the Premier League. Um, We are talking about Barcelona today. The options in the People's Poll were shirt sponsorships in the Premier League. Uh, I read something extremely interesting over the weekend. I think we'll come back into this on a Money in Football podcast. So the difference in money being made by the Greedy Six versus uh, the rest of the league is unbelievable on shirt sponsorship. I didn't realise how big the difference is. Um, I also put well, in the vote. Go on. When you got like uh, some the well, Man City, what's this? Etihad on the, sh- on the shirt. Yeah. Well, that's left pocket, right pocket. Uh, well, that was going to be part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, Man City is, is, is the biggest of all. Yes. Um, but then you could say, well, they are the best team at the moment. So they should have the biggest. There, there, there's, there's a case for that. Um, despite not perhaps being the biggest club in people's eyes. Uh, another topic for potential discussion was what do clubs need within the transfer window, which is always a difficult one to do during a transfer window when we're coming into the final kind of uh, 100 metres, if you will, because teams are doing different stuff every single day. And I'm sure we're going to come back to that before the window closes. But yes, Barcelona and primarily, can they register new signings ahead of this weekend's La Liga opener against Real Vallecano is the subject of conversation on this podcast. Um, it's a subject Suj and I have obviously been following pretty closely over the last 18 months. We first did a podcast um, uh, right at the beginning of February last year about Barcelona's €1 billion uh, Euro debt, which wasn't being reported too widely at the time. That debt is now bigger. It was at, at last... Uh, estimate 1.3 billion euros in debt so how are a football club that's so badly in debt trying to spend more money than everybody else in the transfer window is is part where we're at here do you want to cover what they've done so far in terms of people in spain are calling them levers fc levers fc and they've basically james got a credit card and they've basically put it all Big on one. the credit card, uh, knowing that it's going to be paid off over over twenty five years. Um, but Barca need, had had holes in their accounts. Let's call it. So basically, they needed money. They needed money to fill in historical losses and pay back historical debts. Um, like you mentioned, the, uh, the there was a point, and there probably still is that debts over a billion. But not all of those debts are due immediately. So some of those debts are slightly sh- longer term. Some of those, unfortunately, were very short term. They had this problem last season. And so they need to raise cash very quickly to fill this kind of black pit of money that they needed to get in. And the way they do that is through fresh investment into the club, um, which is money being pumped straight in. Thing is, when you want to raise money and get it into a club quickly, you need to sell something for that money, right? You're either going to sell shares in the business, like at Tottenham this summer, put, uh, Enoch put 150 million in for like 3%. But they got, what do they get for the money they put into the club? Shares in the club. Barca have this model of kind of <coughs> fan ownership. So you can't, the club itself is not for sales. This is not a problem that they can go and get a foreign investor in or something like that, they sell the club. They, it's debatable in terms of playing assets. Like who do they have that's kind of worth a significant amount of money that they could move on? Not many. And even like Frankie De Jong that we'll, we'll come back to and have a talk about, they have they owe him money. He's part of that 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 money that they owe. So shifting players on and trying to raise capital that way is not going to be difficult or easy. 
And La Liga are particularly uh, strict in terms of the the, the FFP the, compared they, to maybe they have their own model. Yeah, and this is this is it. Like we've we've seen all summer, Barca buying players, Lewandowski, Rafinha, Kunde, so on and so on and so on. And you're like, oh, why are they buying players? There's a difference between buying them and then being able to register them. And this is this is where you mentioned, will they be able to register them? Some some people might think that they're well, they've bought these players, they're going to play. And you see them playing pre-season, so they must be eligible to play. Uh, 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 they're not eligible to play. Pre-season friendlies don't count. So Barca decided, right, we need to get some money. What can we sell? And they've activated. Three levers so far. Uh, the first two being that they've sold their television rights money for the next 25 years to an American investment company. They've sold, yeah, uh, they've sold uh, in total 25%, I think, is the, they, they sold 10 and then they sold 15% of all future TV rights money from La Liga, not from Champions League or anything else. This is specifically La Liga TV rights money for the next 25 years. And so, yeah, Barca, this is where I say you've got a credit card. You've basically gone and got a money advance on your credit card and you're now going to pay it back over the next 25 years. Um, and that has raised them in the region of, and we'll add a little asterisk here, 650, 660 million euros will come to We'll touch on the asterisks now if you want. Touch on the asterisks. Why are you talking about? Well, La Liga don't think that it's 667 million. <laughs> they reckon it's 517, and Barca have used 150 million of their own money um, in into this kind of deal. So they're like, actually, no, 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 you you haven't um, you haven't raised 667 million. You raised 517. So they're uh, but sus. Barca uh, are obviously denying this, as you would expect. Um, but yes, it is, has been going around over the last few days, this idea that Barcelona have essentially taken 150 million out of the club and put 150 million back into the club. Mm. And you can't count that. Of course you can't. <laughs> well, you should. But they're trying to count, they can't, trying to count it as new money. Yeah. But if you think about it, let's just say it's 600 million for argument's sake over 25 years um, for 25% of their TV rights. These guys are going to clearly like what? What does what do Barca make in a season from TV rights? Oh, from I, I don't know the numbers to be honest. It's obviously not like the Premier League clubs, but no. I would have thought in terms of global sales, I would have thought La Liga must be the, the second highest in terms of to mm. to overseas territories and stuff. Yeah. So you're talking as long as these guys are making more than 20, 20 million. And of course, actually, to be honest, that's probably not true, is it? Because Barca and Real Madrid sell their own TV rights. Yeah. Individually, so it probably is more. Daniel massive TV amounts rights. of money eventually um, they're going to look at this in 20 years unless they eventually buy it all back they're going to go oh my god real madrid next door well, it's not next mm. door but you know what i mean the 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 country enemy if you will they're making all this extra money on yeah because you sold your your tv revenue yeah, exactly your that. future years you're mm. selling your future to to deal with a problem now that's yeah. not proven enough they've also sold obviously 24.5 percent uh, of Barcelona Studios. That's correct. To, to socios.com. Oh my God, this isn't murky enough. Let's get crypto involved. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, anybody that thinks that's a, uh, that, that there's, there's, what, what socios.com, many will have heard about uh, Chili's and the NFTs and all of the clubs that are, are launching their fan tokens um, under much controversy. When Messi made the move to PSG, he got paid out in this kind of cryptocurrency called Chili's and Socios and fan tokens. Socios are the company behind Chili's and the fan tokens that power most of the fan tokens for uh, all of the major clubs, if not all, to be honest with you, are doing it through this brand. So, yes, they've sold uh, a quarter of their uh, studio TV kind of production house branding merchandising to this nft based company nft Which fan token they believe has, has brought them in 83.7 million is yep. is the, in pounds yep. that's the figure that i've seen mentioned for that um it's worth saying and i'm not saying socios.com won't play barcelona and i'm sure they probably will but um for if anyone wants some further research into milan of waiting on payments from a from a company who have deferred on the first payment of their sponsorships into and they're shitting themselves at the moment. 
then they're not going to get this money into Milan. And uh, that's not um, socios. No, it's not socios. Yeah, it's not. No. Uh, James, I have an answer. Uh, revenue from television broadcasting rights of soccer clubs in Spain's highest professional league in 2020-2021. Barcelona, 165 million euros. Massive. So selling 25% of that a year. And what did yeah. they get in? So, so that's about 30, 35 million. Yeah. Is what, they'd, what, what you'd make. And they've sold it for about 20, 25. So... Whoever this hedge fund is or this investor house, they're, they're looking to make 20, 30% returns on that over 25 years. I mean, that's a that's a good deal. James. If so, if you said to me... Yeah, not for Barcelona, it's not. No, not for Barca, for the hedge <laughs> fund it is. Give me 20 quid and I'll give you 30 quid. You're going to do that. Okay, it's over 30 years. But um, yeah, it's a, it seems like uh, it's cheap what they've sold it for, but it's the right amount of money to plug the hole. All they've done here is backfill their debt to the point that gets them these players registered and the Liga say, yeah, all well and good, cool. Now they've got to kind of carry on building, but with a credit card bill to pay each and every month except, as well. Or someone taking a someone taking a chunk out of their earnings. Except we don't know at this stage if the credit card bill is enough. What complicates matters a little bit is nobody, physically nobody at this moment knows what Barcelona will actually be able to spend on on wages. Um, yeah. I don't think this actually becomes official official till sort of September the 1st. But I think they 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 have to give Barcelona some sort of guidelines, obviously, before the start. It's really weird. You would, have thought, um, you would have thought under this system they'd do it in a year in advance, wouldn't you? Really? Yeah. Rather than, oh, we'll tell you on September the 1st what you can spend for this season when the season's beginning on August uh, 13th or whatever it is this coming weekend. Bit of a strange one. Um, but then, as we know, there's some strange things in La Liga as well, not just at Barcelona. Your man, Javier Tebas, um, he's always quick to fire the gun, isn't he? Uh, PSG and Man City and Newcastle and others because of the state ownership. Have a look at some of your own in-house stuff. Mm. Barcelona, I mean, to be fair, La Liga aren't bending over for Barcelona. Barcelona no, probably no, no. La Liga is it's being thought at the moment that La Liga are going to tell Barcelona they need to activate a fourth lever, which is likely to mean selling up to 49% of Barcelona studios. I presume such if it was 50%, Barcelona would no longer be the controlling owner of Barcelona studios, essentially. So 49% would be the maximum. Did you also hear this rumor, Serge, uh, a couple of years ago? And it's worth saying this was under the last regime of Bartomeu rather than Juan Laporta, who's obviously the president at the moment. Did you hear this UEFA story that's been knocking about the last couple of weeks? That uh, that, that reportedly they went to UEFA and asked for an advance on Champions League TV money. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't the Super League. You don't automatically qualify. You went out in the group stage last year and ended up in Europa League. Um, and they looked, and to be fair, under Xavi, they obviously performed pretty well in the second half of last season and comfortably finished in the top four. But going back to the winter months, it looked precarious, where there was serious, serious doubts. And how did they park it out of it? They signed people like Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and got Adama Traore on loan and stuff. The thing is, when I look at all these players that Barca are buying as well, uh, do they make them fundamentally better? Yeah, Rafinha obviously is a great signing. Lewandowski yeah. is obviously one of the best forwards in the world, but he's 34. And, and, Bayern, Munich, and Bayern Munich are extremely happy, by the way, with the deal that they've got to move him on. They they think they've ripped Barcelona off. Um, and a lot of people think they've ripped Barcelona. In the case of um, Rafinha's move to Leeds, uh, from Leeds, Leeds, are the, Leeds didn't want to sell him to Barcelona because they agreed a deal with Chelsea and Barcelona were pissing about. But obviously the player's wish was to go to Barcelona, which is understandable. But Leeds have inserted clauses in the deal that, like, if Barcelona don't meet a certain date, they've got to pay ten million extra. And this is how clubs are going to treat Barcelona now. Because it, there's nobody unaware of the trouble they're in. If you look at the Frankie De Jong deal, that's obviously been long rumoured with Manchester United, and we think there's some interest from Chelsea now as well. Yeah, of course, in United's case, it would have been great to get De Jong in in time for Ten Hag a month ago. But there's every chance they'll buy him in two, three weeks for half of the value that Barcelona want, because Barcelona will be so desperate every chance. And on Frankie de Jong, what have they, they said to him? They've, they've threatened him with like legal stuff. Yeah. 
I mean, the, the, what I don't get on the Frankie De Jong deal is their um, kind of store that they've, they've raised all this money. The amount of money that they owe him, from my understanding, is 15 to 18 million euros That's in right. back salary. But then if they sell him to Manchester United and selling a maximum value, they might get 75 or 80 and they'll get him off the wage bill. Surely it's like, just give him the 15 million so that you can get, um, so that you can get um, 80 million back in and get him off your wage bill and be done with it and move on. Was, but wasn't there an easier way to look at this though? Them, they don't well, want to well, give him they, the money. They, they don't want to give him the money that they owe him. So many players have deferred wages. So for example, quite infamous last year, Gerard Piquet and Jordi Alba in particular uh, took quite a hit on their salary, which was meant to hot part enable the re-signing of Lionel Messi, which Barcelona then found out that they couldn't do, despite telling the whole world every day, yeah, don't worry, it'll be fine, even though there was a good kind of six-week period where Lionel Messi was unregistered to Barcelona. Um, there's few doing it again, so PK is taking another, another hit on his wages now, what we don't know if that's deferred again. So De Jong had his deferred where his his salary was reduced. I think it was three million two years ago, six million last season, and meant to go back up to 18 million this year, with obviously the money owed to him from the previous years as well. And Barcelona obviously don't want to give him that money. But the most sensible thing to do here, would it not have been to look at it and go, Actually, we've got a world-class midfielder who Xavi doesn't want to go, by the way. Laporta yeah. also says he doesn't want him to go, but they don't want to pay De Jong him the says, money. I don't want to go as well. Rather than buying these players, I mean, with respect, right? Marcus Alonso. I ask any Chelsea fan if he can defend. Okay, great. He takes a good free kick and stuff. Yeah, so, so can Rafinha. Okay, he can take a great cross. Yeah, so can Rafinha and plenty of other players they've got. Usman Dembele. They were desperate to get out of the club in January so they could get any sort of money for him. Now they're celebrating him like he's the greatest free transfer signing of all time. So him and Sergio Roberto were out of contract. They've managed to re-sign them, yes, on reduced terms. But they couldn't sell these players and get money in for them in January because they were asking for too much money and people didn't particularly want them. In De Jong's case, I'm just looking on the outside. Play him. Keep him. Play him. Stop buying players. Why, why have you got to buy players? The thing is, it's not like Barcelona don't have these, some of these great kids coming through, like Pedri and Gabby and stuff. But even them, like like others did previously with the likes of Iniesta and Xavi, and we know they're probably not going to get to that level. But Barcelona are famous for La Masia and the quality they provide from their youth system and stuff. Build again, properly. Some of the players they're buying just doesn't even make sense to me. You think, yeah, okay, they're good players. Lewandowski, Rafinha, obviously. But you, I've been like, Banging on about Alonso and Aspilicueta. For what? You're going to get these guys in. And what What do you think with them? Big wages. Why are you doing that? Um, from a footballing point of view, as you just highlighted, and from a financial point of view, as I was mentioning there as well, James, none of it makes sense. When, when something like this happens, I second guess. My, I'm like, what do they know that we don't know? What do they know about what they're doing? That they that know we don't what, say. that we don't see. I, I think it probably just haven't watched Marcus Alonso for a few years. Or <laughs> so either they've got a master plan that we don't know, and it's going to be amazing, and we're going to be like, okay, these guys are geniuses, and they've really maneuvered their way well out of it. Or what I think is more likely is they're being ridiculously naive and getting a little bit excited and ahead of themselves, and digging their own graves. Probably not the right word but a pit that's going to be very hard to get back out of and that's what i think like it's it, all the signs seem like they are being stubborn and pig-headed and think we're barcelona and we're right and we know what we're doing and we'll be the biggest club in the world and we'll make loads of money back and so it will be all right the world's changed man the whole world has changed in the last two years three years since covid from a financial point of view You've seen how inflation's going up and interest rates are going up. Imagine having loans and interest rates going up. It's going to be harder to borrow money, much harder to borrow money. And the growth of the Premier League is incessant. And as much as Barca and Real and Bayern, they'll still be, the, be amongst the elite and big clubs in Europe. Like the, the eyes and eyeballs are all over here, mate. The eyes and eyeballs are all over here. So uh, going back to Frankie Dion, because he's been kind of the centerpiece of a lot of these 
these transfer talks across the summer. So Barca have now threatened that what they've said to him is is potentially a criminal case where the, the re-signing of the contract on reduced terms was obviously under the old regime, Bart, uh, Bartomeu's regime, and Barcelona are trying to get it an old. Say, like, yeah, you ain't owed the money, nothing. They're trying to do everything to unsettle the player, potentially turn the fan base against him, say, like, look, we need to get rid of this player to get him out of the club. And he's not the only one. So loads of salaries of Barcelona players have obviously been linked to the, the press, primarily normally like the Madrid-based paper. Marker is the biggest one over the last couple of years, which includes what Lionel Messi's salary was, which is eye-watering to say the least and understandable therefore why they couldn't re-sign him even on like a pound a week or something um and they're, they're trying to they're, they're causing a wedge where they want like the fan base to turn on certain players where they say well I, I, they, they'll get booed I mean, martin braithwaite came off something the other day and they booed him all right maybe he's not good enough to play for barcelona it's not his fault he was signed one yeah. of the things you'll keep hearing is salaries so, are never so the club's fault the young is on huge wages you know, Frankie De Jong didn't hold a gun to Barcelona and say, I want this salary. All he did was sign the paper. He's entitled to that money. He's his. And it's completely understandable as well that he doesn't want to leave Barcelona Football Club. We spoke about it on the Patreon pod. We did a couple of weeks ago when we focused on this and said it's, it's still probably the most attractive club in the world to play for because you've still got big club status, history and the lifestyle, city and beach lifestyle. Whatever you want in Barcelona, you can have. It's still probably the most attractive club in the world to play for and one of the most attractive places in the world to live. Back to the question then, James. Do you think they will be allowed to sign these, uh, to register these players before the start of the Liga season? Well, the feeling amongst people in Spain at the moment is that the answer is yes. And because it doesn't help La Liga. Not having these players and not having Barcelona doesn't help La Liga. And so eventually they they will let them register. La Liga needs a successful Barcelona. And by the way, so does Real Madrid. It's believed that a lot of this money that they've had in coming has, has part been helped arranged by Florentino Perez in terms of contacts and stuff. They hate each other, but they, but they need, need each, each other. other. It's a little bit like Rangers and Celtic in, in Scotland to a sense. In terms of those two, all those clubs in Scotland need Rangers Celtic. They're all in huge trouble. That league's in massive trouble if Rangers or Celtic ever left. La Liga needs Barcelona and Real Madrid, and it needs both of those clubs to be successful. Real Madrid need Barcelona to be successful for the product of the league. Because if Real Madrid are just winning the league every year, the value of the product is going to go down. When you see how competitive the Premier League is getting greater and greater, where I think... Teams near the bottom of the Premier League are really getting to the stage now where they'd be beating mid-table teams in most other European countries. And I, I've, that's not something I think we've ever actually truly been in a position to say before. So Madrid need Barca to be successful. La Liga needs Barcelona to be successful. La Liga, as in the, the people that run it, also need a successful Barcelona for their brand. But they're not going to back down in terms of what Barcelona have to walk, work within, within their salary arrangements. Everything becomes so much clearer about the whole wanting to move to the Super League. The other thing as well is, I think it's worth touching on, and like culturally, how we see it, I think is very different to how it's being seen in Spain. So I generally think, for most Barca fans out there at the moment, they, they just want the club to get new players in and win shit as quickly as possible. If this was my club right now, I'd be petrified. Agreed. I'd be, I'd be scared. And I don't think it's just me and Tottenham or you and West Ham. I think almost every football club, every football fan in this country would be petrified about the, the future of their football club if they were behaving in this way. But you don't hear anything about that because when they go and have their social meetings, where they, they have to go and meet the members of the club to get stuff signed off to say, can we sell this? Can we sell this? so we can inject some more money into the club. The answer is always, well, you, we need to have the best players. That's always what it's about. The football club is built on Mesquian club, right? More than a club. And Barcelona's historical history of, as a lot of it has been about how they actually play, the style of play, the great players, the Cruyffs, the Maradonas, the Stoichkos, Romarios. It goes into obviously the noughties with the Ronaldinho's, Messi's, etc. There's... there's hundreds of brilliant players I've left out, right? 
as much as about the style was actually winning. I feel like in this century, it's really changed for Barcelona. We're actually the ethos of everything that they stand for, that cathedral of a football stadium, which have now sold to Spotify for nowhere near the value of what it should be. And if anyone has been, the stadium is decaying and needs work, which it is getting. They're a, they, they have become everything that they hated about Madrid. They've become win at all costs. And that's what this is about. What happens if Barcelona finish second or third in the Liga again and go out in the Champions League group stage? Because the thing is, they can pull this next lever now and most probably sign these players. They're going to have to do it all again next summer unless they get mass reduction in the amount of wages that they're spending on players. It's all dates back to selling Neymar. They got armed with 220 million and everyone took the piss out of them. Coutinho, Dembele. They spent more on Coutinho and Dembele than what they got for Neymar. Makes yeah. sense of that. And the salaries they've been given out, it's just killed them. He, even once they took Messi off of their books last summer, their salary against turnover was 103%. Wow. That's with Messi off. So imagine what it was before Messi had left the football club as well. Mm. This story will rumble on over the coming weeks and we'll be keeping a close eye on it. Uh, and of course, we may be well come back to it. Uh, if you are interested in kind of some financial topics that we do discuss, then I would you know, give a little nudge to a Patreon uh, because we do money in football episodes quite regularly and we're doing more frequently this season, starting today with a look at NFTs and crypto's involvement in football as well and socios and fan tokens and that kind of thing. You can find plenty about that on patreon.com forward slash planet FPL. Uh, we'll think, love to have you as part of the community. I think there's going to be more Barcelona this month as well. Somewhere. Yeah, 100%. Um, because I think this, this story hasn't got a conclusion. I think in summary, I think they will get the, the players registered because I think they, I said to you weeks ago, I think they're going to do something stupid if they have to. Because having put all these players in public, they've got to register them. So Correct. they have to, they have to find a way, and it's just pushed back one problem to the next. But I suspect they might not be registered in time for this weekend. One of the thoughts at the moment is they could obviously register a couple and then come back and register the others. But A, who do you choose to register? And also I read this morning that actually it's a lot safer for Barcelona to do everything at once or nothing. Mm, agreed. We're back at you tomorrow uh, with Sky Fantasy Football. Uh, successful enough kind of sort of first week. So you forgot a captain for already. Yay! <laughs> so make sure wherever you are listening to the podcast, you are subscribed and we'll be back at you tomorrow with that. But most importantly, stay safe and uh, look after yourselves. Ciao for now. Thanks, everyone. Be nice to each other. Cue music, please, man, Chuck.